Pranoda, good afternoon um, and welcome to this NAHT webinar where we've come together this evening to discuss the school day year reform here in Wales. My name is Laura Tams and I'm the organiser here at NAHT Cymru and I'll be facilitating this evening's event. Firstly, can I take this opportunity to thank you um, so much for attending this evening and wishing you all a very happy St David's Day. Um, I'm delighted uh, to welcome you all this evening to this broadcast where we um, also are joined by Karina Hansen, our NAHT president, and Laura Dole, our director here at NAHT. Um, we're also extending a warm welcome to Welsh Government officials who um, are here this evening to observe and to hear your comments on the reform. We are recording this evening's broadcast, so if you would rather not have um, your image, then can I ask that you turn your camera off? Um, we do appreciate you sharing and commenting on our events on social media, um, but I would ask that do not post any photos at this point. Um, during these challenging times, it is lovely to all to come together and share our personal views. Um, they can empower people, but, but also we're, we're just mindful of the community, that they stay within the community of the audience. So thank you for your understanding there. Um, the chat function is available and I would say please use this. I will be uh, checking that throughout the evening and time permitting we may also have a few polls. Um, so without further ado I'm going to pass you over to Laura Dole, our Director NAHT Cymru to officially open this evening's broadcast. Thank you. Thanks Laura and uh, can I also extend my uh, thanks to everybody for, for joining this evening um, and of course many thanks to those Welsh Government officials who have dialed in to listen to our views and uh, suggestions. So the aim of today's webinar is to give members the opportunity to share their thoughts on proposals for school day and school year reform. Uh, you will have seen the commitment between Labour and Plaid Cymru to look at these issues under the cooperation agreement. As it stands, 13 schools are currently taking part in a pilot programme of extending the school day by one hour, and the Welsh Government has commissioned Beaufort Research to carry out a survey of the profession about possible changes to the academic year. At the moment, no decisions have been made on either issue, and the Government is exploring all options. So today is an opportunity for you to share your thoughts, your views, your concerns, and also your suggestions on what changes might look like. Are you in favour of extending the school day or not? What would the impact be for your school? What challenges would have to be overcome if this was to go ahead? Does shortening the summer holidays appeal to you, your school, your parents and your learners? Would having fixed inset days, for example, across local authorities make sense? Or would removing those flexibilities from schools throw up a host of challenges? NAHC Cymru has already raised concerns about the timing of such proposals, with such a huge reform agenda already underway, and in some cases taking its toll on the profession, why are you changing the length of the school day now? Why do we, what do we need to look at school reviews? Do we need to look at review of the school year right now? While we continue to question the evidence base for looking at such reforms, it's important to hear from you directly to ensure that we are accurately reflecting your views on discussions with government. So I think what we're going to do is throw it open to questions or anybody that would like to give their views firstly on school day and then school year reform. But before I take any additional questions, I've just noticed our president, uh, Karina Hansen, uh, has been able to join us. Welcome, Karina. Um, not to put you on the spot immediately, but would it be OK to hand over to you to just give some initial uh, thoughts and reflections on the possible changes to the school day and school year? Yeah, no problem. Thanks. Thanks, Laura. Um, yeah, so when this was first proposed, um, we looked at the uh, initial proposal, which was all around the school year, I believe, wasn't it, when we first had a, had a look at it. And I don't think we had any uh, objections to that in terms of assessing what the, um, the, the, the feeling was in, ter in terms of schools and, and the public. Um, I think they, you know, there's, there was a piece of work that was going to be carried out around looking at what that might look like. And I don't think we had any objection to that. 
I think when um, the next questions came out around uh, changing the school day, I think then was the time when alarm bells started to ring for us a little bit. Again, no, no objection to looking at it. I think that's something we're, we're open to, to assessing and, and seeing what the feeling is out there. But I think the alarm bells for us are ringing around the um, pilot that's been going on in terms of cost, um, you know, we're, we're in a very difficult situation across Wales at the moment where funding has been an issue for quite a number of years. And I think one of our key questions was whether this was the best way forward in terms of value for money for our education system in terms of all of the change that's going on at the moment. Uh, Laura's just outlined that we're, we're going through such a huge time of change. It feels like change upon change upon change at the moment and we're not being allowed to um, you know assess where we are and decide what we need to do next you know I can see all the arguments um, for changing the school day I, I, I get that um, but I think in terms of how that will work in reality in uh, with, with you know actually being able to do that in every school in Wales I'm not sure that's a, a doable thing um, but as Laura has said, you know, we're, we, we're not really here to make those decisions. We need to work on behalf of our members and decide what our policy is uh, regarding this after we've spoken to you uh, as members. So it'd be interesting to see what people's feelings are. I think uh, um, in terms of where we were, our initial feelings were, oh goodness, uh, this doesn't seem like a really great idea in terms of uh, funding and what, what else could be better spent. You know, we're educators first and foremost and um, it feels a little bit like a babysitting service that we're offering, extending the school day for some. I, I think there's a there's an element to that. So, you know, if if we can see the the good of it, the benefit of it, I think it's it's a great great way to go forward. If it is us filling in for other services. I'm not quite sure that is the way forward because there are lots and lots of other services out there that we could be treading on toes of. Um, you know, there are wider systems there that that take on these after school and um, extended day services that could well be put out of business by schools providing that service um, further further forward. So yeah, we'd be really interested to hear what your thoughts are um, before we sort of set our policy and our, our way forward uh, on your behalf. Thanks, Karina. Um, I'm going to throw it open, first of all, um, to a discussion around extending the school day. So uh, we know that the pilot scheme uh, is taking place at the moment, and it's a, a relatively uh, small sample of schools. Of course, the offer was extended to schools uh, across Wales to volunteer to take part. Um, and uh, be very interested to hear from, from members on this call as to why any of you may not have decided to take part. Was it a timing issue? Was it a staff issue? Was it a resource issue? Um, I'm really keen to hear your views. And before I start putting members completely on the spot, which I don't want to do, I, I'd really welcome somebody to put their hand up and, and get the ball rolling. I can see some familiar faces. Uh, I know you're not all um, you're not all backwards and coming forwards. So, <laughs> okay, Kevin, brilliant. I can see your hand up. Do you want to get us started? We'll have a go. Can you hear me? We can indeed. Right. Okay. Um, why didn't we go ahead with it? Uh, logistics, quite simply. I, I, you know, the the principle of of what that would entail uh, across a large school and multiple question marks over things like staffing. Now, this may be an unfair um, uh, sort of comment, but from what I've seen of what schools have done use the money to buy in services from other people that's that's what i've seen examples of so i can appreciate pilot schools being able to uh have access to uh funding and then buying in that that extra uh activity but that feels very much like it's an after school it, you know parents will see it as another childcare opportunity just the same as the football club a rugby club etc so um the timing of this was like we just there's no way we we had the time to sort of wrestle with with those sorts of things and and frankly so what that wasn't even on the cards um 
those are the same you know concerns i suppose and views that i feel now in entertaining any proposition for this going forwards um and i just don't see how this is an education um consideration at all i i have yet to hear anything from welsh government that says to me that this is a proposal intended to somehow improve pupils education i don't personally believe that children are going to are going to catch up or raise standards by giving them a longer school day because frankly we, we're all we're all toast by 3 30. you know so i don't buy that it to me this is about child care this is about uh, perhaps helping parents with work and that's fine that's a legitimate agenda but that doesn't make it school's responsibility to do and my biggest concern is uh, pretty much everything that Karina said you know there's a place for that provision fine who's responsible for it does that mean I've now got to be you know having a safeguarding lead in school for all of these parts of the day um, in a previous school of mine there, there was a, a, a school also had a, a sort of private provision well that was inspected under a different arrangement and that was different staff different pay and conditions you know is, is this i mean we, we would be as teachers and, and as senior leaders extremely expensive childcare providers by comparison to sort of everything else that's out there but everything i see at the moment doesn't say to me that this after school provision where it's being piloted is really about education it's just providing some other opportunities and those opportunities can be equally as well provided by other people so i have concerns over safeguarding i've concerns over logistics i've concerns over workload i have major concerns what's what does this mean for teachers paying conditions and that sort of thing and the thought of this on top of the whole dinner free school meals thing which for my school is feeling very very challenging like we might have to be thinking about school day simply to even accommodate all these meals and then suddenly we've got an after you know an after school club that becomes part of the part of our whole school provision um very very concerned about about all of those issues and and to be honest i would just say echo everything that karina said so that that was why we didn't go ahead for it it, it was just never logistically on the cards couldn't handle it um and that wasn't entirely COVID either. I think we'd have felt the same outside of COVID. Thanks, Kevin. I think you've raised some really um, important points there about kind of the, the logistics and the uh, mechanics of, of doing something like this. You know, we've already had discussions with government around what would be the expectations. For example, if if this was to go ahead and this was a, a, an extension of the school day, what would be the... Um, what would be the expectation of teachers, teaching assistants, school leaders to be part of this extension? Would this be part of the normal academic school day or with this additional provision on top of the statutory hours that the children are already in school? Would it be provided by school staff or would the expectation be to bring in outside providers? If there was the expectation to bring in outside providers, what would that look like? Is your school in an area where you would be able to access that kind of support? A number of uh, particularly primary schools have come back to us and said there is absolutely no way that we would be able to get an outside provider interested in coming to our school. Um, we have enough uh, problems trying to recruit lunchtime supervisors because of the, the very short um, periods of time they're expected to work and there just simply isn't the interest to take on these additional roles. So I think there's some really important themes coming up with the conversation already. I'm going to pass over to you, uh, Jen, I can see your hand up. So if you'd like to come in next, that would be Thank you, Laura. Um, can you hear me? Yes, yeah, yeah, thank you. Um, Sorry, um, I totally agree with everything that Kevin said, but um, I was I was going to talk a little bit about um, the funding of it because I'm, I'm staggered by the amount of money. I can't remember what it is, but I'm staggered by the amount of money that's been put into this. And I think uh, I don't believe that will continue. That, that won't be the case for the rest of us eventually. That's what I feel. I think they're putting all this money into it now. But like we saw with the foundation phase, you know, there was a huge amount of money put into the pilot that could be a great success. And then later down, somewhere down the road, that money seemed to just filter away and disappear. And we were left with still the expectations of the foundation phase. So I think that that side of the funding really worries me um, that it'll just somehow eventually be absorbed into our usual budget, which, which has always worried me. And we've already got all the grants and all of that going on as well, which is 
another area of funding that's very frustrating, isn't it? Um, and I think, you know, for a school like mine, I'm, I'm considered quite a sort of leafy, quite um, affluent area, I suppose. Um, but from, from in terms of my budget, my budget is awful because I've got no very little PDG. So that hits me numerous times. We're in the Vale of Glamorgan, which is a poorly funded authority, you know, all of that. So um, my children would benefit from having more staff there in the day. I, I really feel strongly about this. I've got junior classes, children struggling emotionally, and I've got no support staff with those junior classes. So to me, that's a hope that give me the money now to, to support the children in the day. Let's mind after school. And it would just be a pure and simple free childcare in my school, 100%. So th it's just all backwards to me. It just doesn't make sense. Um, and that, yeah, so it was the, it's the whole funding thing. I totally agree with all the other things that people have said as well, but I don't want to repeat all that. But I think, yeah, the funding should, you know, we should be given budgets to, to, for us to decide what our children need. My children need adults in the daytime at the moment. Does that make sense? Sorry, Laura, I'm waffling now. No, it, it absolutely does, Jen. And I think it comes back to conversations that we've had um, previously around where where is the greatest benefit for learners? Where where, where is the greatest gain? Where can where, where should that money be spent? And we've got the opinion. We've had conversations around this. We've spoken to government, and you know there is a lot of uh, of academic research out there that says that it's quality teaching for the time that these learners are in the classroom that makes the absolute difference. That is what makes a difference to children and young people. And so. Therefore, we could ask the question, and we are asking the question: Why, if the if the aim, if the aspiration is to raise um, uh, to range the academic is the academic attainment of all learners across Wales, why are we not concentrating our efforts on making sure that they get the absolute best teaching and learning for the time that they are in school? If there is an additional provision that can be provided to support families with after school care, that's great. That's brilliant for those families. You know, let's be honest, some of us are on this call would benefit from that with our children in school. However, that is not about education. That's something separate. That's something different. I think that's a really important uh, distinction to be made. And a question that we kind of keep coming back um, to conversations with government on, which is what do we hope, what do we want to achieve by this? What is the aim of extending the school day? Is it support for parents and families? Great, that's fine. But that's not the responsibility necessarily schools. If it's about raising attainment and, and 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 opportunities for learners, speak to the profession who will tell you absolutely where the greatest benefits and the greatest gains can be made in, in that respect. Um, is there anybody else that wants to come in before I start uh, picking up some uh, comments from the chat? And Chris, I see you actually thing. waving. Sorry, we've got Tim Newbold next, and unfortunately, oh. Tim's hand is so strategically placed up against the wall that you couldn't <laughs> see it. But yeah, Tim Newbold oh. is next, and then Chris Parry. Thank you. Thanks, Laura. Oh, th thanks, Laura. I, I just wondered if the other Laura was sort of aspiring to keep me quiet. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I'm, I won't repeat what what most people have said already, but um, for me, it, it, it's there's three questions. What is it? Who does it? And where do they do it? Um, people, as colleagues have spoken already about what it is. Is it childcare or is it education? Can you really do education in the seventh hour in the day? I, I won't go over that one. Who does it is really important because I know my staff are absolutely shattered but, um, at, at the end of the working day, working week, working term. Um, so you're going to have to bring people in. And in which case, where do they do it? Because in my school, the teachers are preparing the next day's lessons in the classrooms. And those that aren't are running their free after school clubs in the hall or on the playground. So where, where, where are you going to do this in the, in the school in the school building? And um, um, the last thing is, of course, um, I think it was Michelle in the chat just now has, has, has stolen my last point about the discipline. Um, you know, who's going to handle the discipline? Because uh, outside providers won't be able to do that. And so who is it going to fall to? Who's going to be who's going to get, take the phone calls from parents because there's been arguments among the children or they didn't like one of what the providers were doing? That's going to come to us as well. And with all due respect, I'm not going to take responsibility for somebody else's private provider provi providing something. So, I mean, 
and everything else that's been said as well, I, th I thoroughly agree with. Thanks. Thank you, Tim, and apologies for not seeing your um, hand up earlier. We come to uh, Chris Parry next. Chris? Yeah, um, sorry, just, just to, to throw, throw some other points in, really. Speaking as a secondary head that um, fully embraced the idea of community-focused schools when that initiative was introduced in the earlier 2000s, um, I'd strongly recommend um, anybody go back and look at any evaluations that took place around that programme, because we did extend the school day, we did bring in providers, and I could talk at length about the challenges posed, posed by safeguarding, the sheer cost of transport that emerged around those issues and all the complications that everybody's alluded to. So I would agree with what everybody said, but I think that particular initiative has probably got a body of evidence that 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 Welsh government can draw upon to find out, you know, exactly what happened there. Um, however, I would also kind of throw in from a from a secondary point of view that um, look in, in secondary schools for many many years now, there's been an extension to the school day that hasn't probably been recognised, and the fact there's an expectation from parents and the community, and probably like a pressure put on teaching staff from. Um, senior leadership teams as well about the delivery of, of better and better exam results at all points. So, you know, I know for a fact that teachers in my school will start delivering after school revision sessions pretty much from October as we begin to get ready for the winter exam sets. Now that work that's undertaken is not recognised and not often remunerated. On occasion you'll have LAs that will put some funding in to pay for some revision that, take place, that takes place during holidays. But um, the work that typically takes place after school is just organised by teachers and arranged themselves. Um, so I would still be very wary about any changes to paying conditions around this issue. But I'm presuming that after the pilot, and if people go back as well and reevaluate the community focused school programme, there is going to be a body of evidence that emerges that I, you know that I would feel duty bound to examine to see if there are going to be any benefits for my teaching staff. Because I do recognise the fact that quite often they work for very limited recognition and pay. So, you know, it would be it would be daft of me to say that that's something that I wouldn't look at. Um, but I think that's a long way down the line and I would be interested to see the outcome of the pilot first. That's great. Thanks very much, Chris. And I think, you know, it's, it, it's important to touch on the fact that, you know, this is not this is not our first time down this road you know schools have been through it before there there was significant uh, evidence that was produced and i know we've spoken um at length about some of the the, the challenges um that, that the pilot at that time uh threw up for schools um i'm gonna play devil's advocate for a second and kind of throw out to members okay so um say for example the welsh government looked at the pilot carried out a consultation and decided that they wanted to extend um, uh, an after-school provision across Wales. Um, there wasn't an expectation for school staff to do it. What would that look like? What would what would we what would schools need to do that? How, would that even work? Would that work in practice? Is that something that would be completely beyond the realms of possibility? I think the reason you know the reason I'm, I'm putting it up there is that we don't know what this might look like yet. This is an opportunity to raise any concerns around that now, or indeed any suggestions of how we could further. Uh, advise government on what this would look like. Um, I'm I'm going to come to Karina because I know it's something that we we've spoken about, Karina, um, and we've you know we've wrestled with the what ifs, what are the possibilities. Um, do you just want to come in on that? Yeah. So we've talked about it, and we we've we talked about the difficulties, I guess, unless legislation of some kind is changed around the responsibilities of the head teacher. Because ultimately, it's down to the head teacher and the governing body to manage any, uh, you know, if you're, if you're looking at um, any kind of third party um, or uh, somebody else coming in, it becomes a third party let. And that's ultimately your responsibility as the head. There's also another issue that's I've actually had this come up today uh, where there is a school who is really trying to offer a wraparound care. And it's this issue of if you are providing something at the moment um, under CIW, you know, who becomes that responsible person if if you're running wraparound care 
that is extended over at a certain amount of time. So are they going to change the rules and regulations around that area? Because uh, this particular head was was um, very concerned that they had been told that they had to name themselves as, as the name person under CIW rules because she can't find anybody on her governing body to do that role and can't find, you know, they run run the after school wraparound care um, themselves as a school, um, which extend, and extends over the period of time that you're allowed to do that. So yeah, there's a lot of problems I think I, I can see in terms of current, the, the way that we currently work that would need to be changed to take that responsibility away from school leaders. And as I think it's Michelle has, has pointed out there, you know, exactly those problems around, you know, if your caretaker is off ill, it's you as a, it's you as the head teacher that ends up being that person responsible for locking up. Um, you know, I know I've got a small school um, <laughs> and if I've got any staff off for any reason, you're the you're the fill-in person. You know, if you if your cleaners are off or your your caretakers off or you know whoever, it's you. And you know, I can I can just see real problems for um, certain types of schools um, in being able to sort of manage manage these things in terms of workload. Thanks, Karina. Okay, we're going to we're going to pause the conversation on. Uh, review with the school day for a second while we look at um, challenges, opportunities, let's be optimistic about reviewing the school year. So really keen to hear your views about current proposals and most of you will have seen the survey uh, commissioned by Welsh Government and being carried out by Beaufort Research on possible uh, changes to the academic year. I think it's fair to say there is no um, there is no preferred option, uh, and that the government is open to all suggestions and ideas. I think I said in my opening remarks, you know, what would change in the academic year look like? Do we believe the six weeks holidays should be set in stone? Are they a benefit? Are they a, a recruitment and retention tool to bring people into the profession? Are they something that families and learners look forward to? Or would moving the six weeks to shorten the struggle that is sometimes the autumn term be of benefit? What about setting national inset days? What would be the challenge around that? Would that um, bring uniformity across Wales or would that remove flexibility from schools that you use to your advantage? Um, I'd really like to hear from you on those issues or any suggestions you've got, please raise your hands. Absolute silence. Okay, you've asked for it, I'm gonna to have to pick on you. Oh no, it's okay, Tim has saved the day. Tim? Got it. On the issue of inset days, um, I, I think we've got to be very, very careful about having them all on the same day. Because if you want good quality training, you're tracing, you're chasing certain providers. And if everybody's got the inset day, it's going to reduce the possibility of good quality um, training on, on, on those days. Um, we do it by clusters in, in our authority. I don't know how others do it, but I would strongly oppose fixed inset days because you just wouldn't be able to get the providers because everyone would be chasing, be chasing the same. I've always been in favour of looking at the school year um, because my bugbear is the different lengths of the terms. I think we need to uh, tackle in the first instance the issue of Easter and Easter should fall wherever it falls but the terms need to be equal lengths. So if there's a bank holiday weekend in the middle of a term so be it but don't create three and a half week terms and eight week terms, half terms by um, going around Easter. So I think that's that's the starting point is is um, where we place Easter in the school calendar. Um, now for the summer holidays, I'm 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 in I think in a tiny minority. But I personally will be very very happy with a four week summer holiday and two weeks all allocated elsewhere. But um, my colleagues at school would lynch me. Well, they wouldn't. They're very nice, but 
they 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 are quite hostile to that because some of them have a particular lifestyle they work their socks off in turn doing 55 60 hours a week and some of them look forward to that big break go away abroad for four or five weeks um, others will say to me well actually we can't relax in a week's holiday or two weeks holiday because it's still going on in your head the only time you get away is the, is, the, is the longer holiday. So the compromise, I think, would be the five-week summer, but we've got to start by looking at Easter. Thanks, Tim, and thanks for um, raising some really important points, particularly around uh, the trade provider for inset days, because I think that's something um, that's not been widely mentioned, so I think that's something for us certainly to take back uh, to our conversations with government. Going to come to Michelle next, please, Michelle. Hi, Laura. I won't put my Hi. camera on for obvious reasons. Um, I agree with Tim totally there, and I was just writing in the chat again, um, just to re-emphasise the point that quite a lot of teachers and senior leaders and those in my position who have uh, pretty much full class responsibility as well as their head teacher role, pretty much work through most of the holidays of the year. And only when it comes to the summer, do they get any semblance of break? Because even in the summer holiday, there's a whole sort of raft of work that gets done in terms of clear up, reset for September. Um, and, and so, you know, you're lucky if you get a week, a complete week or two weeks, then in amongst that six week break. So I have completed the survey and I have strongly emphasised that workload needs looking at before the school year is altered. I think it needs to go one step before the other, because otherwise I feel we may lose more staff again if that happens without workload being looked at first. Um, I know we're sometimes our own worst enemies because um, for very good reasons, we want to do the best that we can by the children, but there is never an end point to the work. And I think although I'm in a, a difficult position, I'm in a good position being somebody who still teaches that class four days a week, as well as being the head, because I can see both sides. Mm -hmm. And I, I really do think we need to look at how we control workload and in primary education, particularly people's weekly workload. It's very, very heavy in primary because you have those children the following day. So unlike a secondary teacher who may not see the class for a week, every single piece of work has to be done for the following day. Those children need their feedback because they come back to you the following day. So. Um, uh, that's what I was I was just writing in the chat fully backing what Tim said there thanks Laura thanks Michelle thanks for your contribution it's lovely to uh to have you with us this evening really nice to hear from you um I'm going to pick up on a point that Karina put in the chat function Karina I don't know if you want to um if you want to come in on this because I know this is something um that we have spoken about and, and actually families have have reflected upon in conversations with our members around the difficulty extending the winter break might be for families. Yeah, it was uh, just something that was raised actually by um, a couple of my parent families actually, where they talked about, you know, it's not ideal because one of the, the options was a three week Christmas break and uh, two week in the autumn, I think there was there were diff various different options, weren't there in that questionnaire? And uh, <laughs> their response was, gosh, gosh no, I, I, that's not the best time to have the children at home. You know, it's not the best weather, you can't get out, or if you do go out, it's for short periods of time because the weather's never particularly good. A lot of families won't have the heating on in the, in the day you know that they they'll keep the heating off but if you've got children at home particularly young children you're going to want to put the heating on all day um another two weeks of heating through the winter months i i don't know i, I think with the cost of living crisis that we're you know we're going to see in the next year two years i i, I can't see that being a real a, a real thing to go for to be honest i think we've got enough enough 
pressure on families at the moment with with that kind of thing rather than adding to that that issue children you, you want children to be out you know the part of the reason we had longer summer breaks was so that children could be out and uh, out and playing and and enjoying the weather you know and you you can you can let them out in those long long summers so i mean i agree with um tim's point about easter that that those holidays uh, they, they, those are quite frustrating terms aren't they at that time um as a as an alternative a school i used to work in we used to have a five week summer holiday and a two weeks at Whitson and that was always really nice that worked really well because you always got a good a good summer break quite cheap in the second half <laughs> of Whitson which was a really good time to go away that that really did make a difference so yeah I, I, I think we were open to looking at it is it really interesting isn't it to look at but I do think we need to look wider than just moving to equal breaks across the year because you want to reduce this um, impact on education, which is one of the reasons they, they've talked about. I'm not quite sure where the educational research is behind that, you know, how, how much of an impact that has every year. I'm not quite sure. Yeah, it's an interesting point, isn't it, Karina? Because if you look at, you know, across across other countries, um, Wales and England have a relatively short summer holiday. If you look at other countries that have 10, 12, some yeah. even have 14 week summer break. Um, yeah. and, and there isn't this huge concern in those countries. In fact, if, if you were to look at the data, some of those countries are, are outperforming, uh, outperforming uh, schools in Wales. Um, compared to, you know, what the, the, there doesn't seem to be that huge loss of learning then, does it? Yeah. But it's certainly not reflective data that we that we yeah. see in the evidence that we hear. My, my nephews and nieces live in Australia and um, they all have, I think it's about three months in the summer, which is our winter, obviously, but they are off school. It seems like a, an endless amount of time, but they they have just come out, of one, one of them's just finished school, it, academically I don't think it's had a massive impact on him that having that length of holiday so I'm not quite sure where the the evidence is around around that so I think the 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 plan is is we, we do need to question is it an educational um plan that Welsh government have or is it something that we're doing to uh be a bit of a, a vote pleaser is it something that kind of will help us along the way because we think parents will like this because it shortens our uh, child minding in certain times of the year. I, again, you know, th those winter months, I, I just see that as being a real problem for families because if you can't go out, like in the summer, you know, if you can go to the beach or go on a walk or go to the park or wherever it is you want to go, it's free, it's cheap. <laughs> In the winter, you know, you're going to be out maybe for an hour and then back home, or you're going to be paying to go to places, you know, like that was pool or whatever it is, you know, to, to, for entertainment purposes, just to get the children out of the house and keep them entertained. So, you know, I, I, I hope Welsh Government look at a broader picture than just those people that do respond because they actually want, they want things their way. Yeah. Thanks, Karina. Okay, I'm going to come to, I think it was Kevin that had his hand up next, and then uh, I'm going to come to Chris. So, Kevin? Hello again. Um, I find myself once again following Karina and sort of saying, yeah, everything Karina just said. But um, I think, uh, I mean, key points really, uh, as I think Tim said before, would be 100% against fixed inset base. That, that is a non-starter, right? Any any independent provider you look at, if you go to fixed inset bays, they are then unsustainable because their entire business model will rely on every school in Wales wanting the same five days of the year. So complete no brainer. If you want quality inset, there are times when we need to utilize external providers and they will all cease to be viable uh, under that model. So that that's, uh, but I, I don't see how any kind of, um, removal of schools flexibility to make the maximum use of inset days which are about training not about things like trying to bung all your holiday all your get your attendance figures up by sticking all the days in one week or anything like that um how, how is how is fixed inset days going to help anything i i really struggle to see that um in terms of the term dates on, on a personal level i'm perfectly okay with things the way they are thank you very much um 
I think the, the again, I come back to the point of why is this being looked at? And, and at the moment I hear, well, because we haven't talked about it for a long time, so let's revisit it. But for what purpose? If it's about what the parents want, why have they not had a questionnaire? Why have only the workforce and the children had a questionnaire and not the parents? If it's a vote winner, how do you know it's a vote winner when you haven't asked the parents what they think? I, I don't understand. So I really don't see what the agenda behind this is. Um, if, it, if, it, if they genuinely want to appease parents, well, then you might as well, you know, why not ask the parents what they think? Um, if it's about trying to improve things for the workforce, e.g. workload or recruitment retention, that seems admirable. Mm -hmm. And maybe more evenly spaced terms could help, because any teacher will know the difference between a five-week half-term and a seven-and-a-half-week term is, is like chalk and cheese. Um, so I could see some potential benefit there. But I'm not hearing that. I'm, I'm not hearing that language. I don't understand why Welsh Government are putting this out there without anything that comes along with it that says we want to you know, make things better for the workforce or we want to improve things for parents. Where's the, where's, where's the aspiration behind this discussion at all? I, and I don't get it. So um, I, I, I just, I, I can't really see how, how this is stacking up because there'll, there'll be, I think most, most of my staff uh, would certainly not be in favor of any significant reduction to the summer. Uh, personally, I feel like we're about midway through week five before I start to feel like I'm in any way rested. And then it's, oh, God, it's done already. Um, and we're back to the grindstone again. So so for that reason, I personally wouldn't really support a shorter holiday. Um, and all the, these points about uh, what parents can do and activities with the children in the sort of summer time. So I don't, I don't think an extension in the winter is, is going to go down well with parents at all, not if we actually think about you know how that plays out so um and and as other people have said england do one thing then wales do something else that'll be interesting uh you know if you have more spread out holidays it might help with cost of holidays a little bit but i don't think that so i don't think that equates to a rationale for doing it i think if you do it that will be a consequence that will come out of it but but only slightly because wales will be very small isn't it as a proportion of the uk of people booking their holidays Anyway, there we go. I think I've I've gone on enough. Thanks, Kevin. And all thanks, thanks ever so much for your, your contribution. I think point that I'm gonna um ask Chris to come in on is a point that you've just raised about you know if things were different in, in England and Wales, and I know Chris, we've spoken about um if we were to change the time for the summer holidays, what might that look like in terms of exams in secondary schools? I just wondered if you wanted to come in on that. Yeah, probably. The, one of the points I was going to make, totally agree with Tim about the, the fixing of the Easter term because the short breaks that we all recognise that can occur because of Easter moving around is not really conducive to preparing pupils for some series of exams. You know, you're trying to cram in a lot of revision in a three week period when normally you get six. So that's an issue for us. Um, even more agree with Karina about the issue that, of the impact on areas of high deprivation like mine um, of kind of forcing children to stay indoors over a winter period when you know, some of the outdoor activities that are free can't take place. And I think we all recognise the concerns that many of us have across the Christmas period when we send in kids home to families that are sometimes chaotic. I wouldn't, I wouldn't want that period of time to be kind of extended even longer. I think it's a really tense time. For many families and I think with the cost of living crisis that we see in the minute that's only likely to increase. Um, around the exam issues I think there are complications not least about the fact that um, in secondary schools um, um, head teachers work in the summer holidays anyway like I think I think my teaching staff are very much open to the fact that as teachers they would they would they would look at changes to some of the holidays although I've reminded them of the fact that um, the six weeks holiday break is probably the only time that they don't work but um, head teachers and senior teams on both A-level results week and GCSE result week work on the Wednesday, um, the Tuesday, the Wednesday, Thursday, and the day after, as typically the Wednesday we get the results the day early. So we're looking at those results and, and facilitating what's going to happen next. And we've got to kind of let everybody know where we are. Thursday, we run exam results day. And the Friday, we're often kind of responding to questions about our analysis of our own exam results too. So basically in that six-week holiday there's always two of them where senior teams are working inside secondary schools and 
for the purposes of this trade union, I, I suspect that that's kind of a really important point that we should acknowledge. And again, it's not often something that's recognised and it's certainly not remunerated. Um, there would, you know, it would be interesting to see if there are some further discussions about what we saw this year, where exam results very level and she says he both took place in the same week which meant it was a very busy week, but we did condense that period of work down. But, you know, also in terms of like pupils um, applying to university through clearing, you know, we've got to be really clear about where our holidays are falling, what staff are available to support pupils, when there may be a difference between what's happening in England and Wales as well. So again, I would say there's loads of issues there. Um, I would want to see some, you know, real thought being put into all those things and the rationale being provided about why we should change and what benefits we're likely to see. Thanks ever so much, Chris, for coming in on that. I think there's some, you know, there's certainly a lot uh, of, of comments and points to take forward um, for our uh, future discussions with Welsh Government. I'm going to just give Karina an opportunity if she wants to come back in just before bringing the meeting to a close and give anybody else an opportunity to put their hand up um, if they would like to um, before we finish, Karina. Yeah, I, um, just to say thank you, really. I think you've, you know, we had gut feelings about our response to um, the consultation from Welsh Government. You've, I think you've, you've put those together really nicely for us. And I, I, you know, I think we all accept that there's lots of different um, views out there and lots of different ways that schools work. And I think one of the things that we're really keen not to do is, is to put a view across that actually cuts um, over the really hard work that we know lots of our work our colleagues are doing particularly I mean there's there's a, a big agenda at the moment around building community schools and I think this is part of that um, and we know how hard schools have worked to provide additional services and support for their local communities so we don't want to cr cut across that and we don't want to be uh, you know sort of treading all over that that amazing work that schools are doing but at the same time we've got to be really conscious and careful about how we um, approach this with Welsh Government in terms of, you know, what our core business is as, as schools, you know, we are educators and that is our core, core business. And much of the time, the things that we do or we're being called to do uh, under the, this new agenda of community schools or, you know, extending the school day feels to me as though we are filling in for services that are just not there and that that really worries me because not only would we be cutting across other colleagues in other services that are underfunded and unable to provide the services that they should be for our school communities but it also cuts across the the work that we should be doing ourselves you know we've talked a lot we've talked just there about quality of teaching and learning that is the number one thing that's going to make a difference to our children in our schools is having enough good quality well-trained teachers in our schools and support from TAs and enough money to run our schools to make the education we provide an excellent one um, so you know it's, there's, there's a lot of issues overlapping here and I feel that if we're not careful and we don't play we don't sort of talk about this in a really careful way we're going to um sort of cut across some of the uh, you know the things that we're trying to do and trying to promote for our schools generally across wales um but i think one of the, the main things that we have felt and we've, we've talked about quite a lot is you know we've got a new curriculum in place coming into place we've got an aln reform coming through it's, it's a huge change for us all Let's just do that well first, get that sorted, do it well, you know, have a really good curriculum in place in Wales and celebrate that. Give us a chance to do it really, really, really well. And then let's look at what the next things are on the on the agenda for work from Welsh Government. Thanks, Karina. I think Karina specifically summed up. Um, where we are with this discussion. This is the first of, I'm sure, what will be many discussions we have with our membership about the 
uh, reform of the school day and school year agenda, please, as always, feel free to pick up the phone to us, drop us an email with your uh, thoughts and suggestions. We will be sending out a survey uh, to our members in the coming weeks on this too. But of course, are always keen to engage uh, at a local level. If you're having a branch meeting uh, and you would like um, NAHT officials to attend, please just keep in touch with us and let us know. Um, I think that's going to bring us to the end of our discussion uh, this evening. Thanks again to everyone for joining us. I know um, there is a host of people waiting in the wings to serve you up some pancakes. I'm going to let you go and say uh, once more, happy St. David's Day and thanks ever so much for joining us. Thanks. Bye bye.